In this past year, the CDC has placed pregnancy on its high-risk list. We've all known for a long time that older adults were at high risk, but now imagine that we've learned enough over this past year that pregnancy is now on that list. What that means is that if you are pregnant, you are three times more likely than if you're not pregnant to go to the ICU because of very severe COVID or 2.4 times as likely to go on ECMO in an ICU if you are pregnant. The question is, how can we prevent that? There's a lot of risk involved in pregnancy, and I am a, I'm a high-risk patient with, with some blood clotting disorders. And I had the opportunity to mitigate one of those risks by getting the vaccine really early. So I was able to get my first dose actually two days after I got my positive test. Uh, so I uh, got it during my fourth week of pregnancy. I actually think the first person to find out that I was pregnant was the person who was checking in at the uh, vaccine clinic. I'm Dr. Katie Beans. I'm a fellow in maternal fetal medicine, so I specialize in high-risk pregnancy care here at the University of Kentucky. I was vaccinated in pregnancy when I was 26 weeks with my second child, who is now six months old and healthy. So at the time, I was taking care of patients in the hospital clinically, and I was seeing a lot of the struggles that they were having with facing respiratory distress or having complications like preeclampsia and also having to deliver their babies early due to moms um, being unstable. Uh, and that was really hard seeing their babies go to the NICU. For me, uh, the risk was higher if I got COVID. I wanted to be able to provide for my children in the future. I wanted to be able to be here for them. In addition to that, I have the opportunity to potentially pass antibodies to the baby. And if I was able to protect the baby uh, from those external things, I was absolutely going to take that risk. We had some preliminary data on vaccination in pregnant women based on women that had become pregnant during the clinical trials and we didn't have any suspicion for adverse issues. We also had no reason to suspect issues with this type of technology and I felt comfortable making that decision. Even with all that information, even all the science, um, that wasn't what made my decision. It was a friend of mine who is a labor and delivery nurse who was very sick. Um, with COVID infection. She was also around the same part of her pregnancy as I was at the time. And we both have um, toddlers at home. I remember caring for her as part of her care team and seeing her through FaceTime while she was in the ICU and seeing her struggle to breathe and knowing that she also had a small child at home, as did I. Whenever I saw her struggling, I knew that I had to protect myself. I had to eliminate any chance that I would not be available for my children. My recommendation is always to get the vaccine if you are able to protect yourself, protect those around you, and especially protect your unborn child. I think that you should take every opportunity to go for that. Vaccination in pregnancy is supported by multiple professional societies, CDC, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine is also supported by the societies that deal with infertility and in vitro fertilization. So we are out there trying to give the facts that the vaccine is safe and that if you get COVID, you are far more likely to become very ill from COVID. So please get the vaccine. We're happy to talk about it at any time.